Simulan mong abutin ang iyong pangarap Na magbibigay danga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin, hindi laging nandyan Dapat mong harapin kami iyong kasama sa bawat akin Magkaakbay nating lulutasin Dito sa Fernandino Teens TV Ang boses ko ay mahalaga Dito sa Fernandino Teens TV Ikaw lagi ang bida Ang mga Na siyang gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanuri Sundin ng wasto at nararapat Kagandahang nasal ang ipakita Ipadama ang pusong may malasakit Dito sa Fernandino Ating harapin ng walang takot Sasamahan ka ni Fernan At dino ang bagong barkada mo Fernandino Teens TV Good morning! Welcome to another day of learning here on Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. I am Ma'am Gemeline Lumage, your science teacher lecturer for today's episode. How are you doing, Fernandino teens? School year 2021 to 2022 is about to end. You are almost across the finish line. How does it feel that you've accomplished so much more than you ever expected and learned new concepts amidst the pandemic? Good? Relieved? Perhaps you are excited to see what's in store in the coming school year. We are all crossing our fingers that the new normal of face-to-face -face learning that includes everyone will soon be possible so we can once again meet our friends in school, do collaborative work in person, and other project-based learning that allows both social and intellectual growth through personal interaction. How would you react if our government finally announced that the new face-to-face -face learning modality will soon be possible? I think I would react the same way too. Elated, excited, and will make sure to seize every moment to give my best in all my tasks. So, let us keep on hoping and praying that the situation will finally allow us to go back to school as we used to and carry on with our lives and bring with us all the learnings this pandemic had taught us. Speaking of reactions, do you recall the previous science episode of Fernandino Teens TV? It is about chemical reactions presented to us by Mr. Danny Manuel. 
Today's discussion is a continuation of that topic. So let us have a quick review of the concepts we learned from that episode. Let us begin. A chemical reaction is a process in which one or more substances which are called reactants are converted to one or more different substances to products. Reactants are initial substances or ingredients that are needed in the reaction and that undergo chemical change during the reaction. A chemical equation is a chemist's shorthand notation for chemical reactions. It represents chemical reaction using symbols and numbers. There are three basic parts to a chemical equation. Reactants, products, and the yields arrow. When writing chemical equations, we use the plus sign which is read as reacts with on the reactant side while is read as and if found in the product side. When reactants undergo a chemical reaction or change, they yield products. The word yield, which means to produce or form, is represented by the arrow. Now, do you remember the different types of chemical reactions? What are they? Great job! The different types of chemical reactions are synthesis reaction, decomposition reaction, single displacement reaction, double displacement reaction, and combustion reaction. Can you tell how these chemical reactions differ from one another? Let us check if you recall these differences correctly by answering this short activity. To participate, simply share to us your answers in the comment section below or write them on a piece of paper. Number 1. True or False? A synthesis reaction is a type of chemical reaction in which two or more simple substances combine to form a more complex product. You have 5 seconds to answer. Excellent! The correct answer is true. Synthesis reaction is best represented by the form A plus B yields AB. Number 2. In the composition reaction, a compound is broken into smaller chemical species, which form best represents the composition reaction. Awesome! The correct answer is B. Number 3. True or false? A double displacement reaction is a chemical reaction where one reactant is exchanged for one ion of a second reactant. Is the statement true or false? Great job! The correct answer is false because single displacement reaction is the chemical reaction where reactant is exchanged for one ion of a second reactant, while double displacement reaction is the type of reaction in which two reactants exchange ions to form two new compounds. Number 4. A combustion reaction is a type of chemical reaction in which a compound is reacted with oxygen to produce heat, water, and a new product. An example of combustion reaction is burning of methane gas, which is best represented by this chemical equation. The question is which part of this equation is known as the oxidant? You may write your answer in the comment section below. Incredible! The correct answer is two molecules of oxygen. Number 5. What type of chemical reaction occurs when hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride or salt and water? The right answer is a double displacement of acids and bases where a hydrogen ion is simply transferred from one chemical species to another. Incredible job, Fernandino teams! 
We will now pick up our discussion for these chemical equations used as examples in the previous lesson. When we get back, we will learn of the objectives of this lesson and determine the difference between coefficients and subscripts in a chemical equation. All these and more when Fernandino Teens TV returns. Ang Schools Division Office City of San Fernando, Pampanga ay kaisa ng Department of Education sa pagsasagawa ng mga proyekto at programa na tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga mag-aaral. Inilunsad ang Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors upang magbigay ng educational at psychological assistance sa mga mag-aaral, magulang at stakeholders ng division. Kaya, kung may nais kayong itanong tungkol sa pag-aaral, maaaring magpadala ng mensahe sa Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors Facebook page o tumawag sa mga numero na makikita sa ibaba ng inyong screen tuwing lunes hanggang biyernes sa ganap na alas 8 ng umaga hanggang alas 6 ng gabi. Maaari rin kayong sumangguni sa ating guidance counselors na nagbibigay ng guidance and counseling services. Lahat ng inyong ibabahagi ay mananatiling confidential. Ang nasabing programa ay nagsisilbiling daan upang malaman ang feedbacks ng stakeholders para matulungan ang ating division na mapagbuti pa ang mga sumusunod na programa. Ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Tumawag na sa aming mga numero o bumisita na sa aming Facebook page at magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan. Fernandino Teens TV You are still watching Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. After our brief review of previous discussions on chemical reactions, let us now dive into our topic for today. Our topic is all about balancing chemical equations. Here are the objectives for today's episode. Number one. Determine the difference between coefficients and subscripts in a chemical equation. Number two, recognize whether a chemical equation containing coefficient is balanced or not. Number three, balance chemical equations using the trial and error method. And number four, balance more complex chemical equations using the algebraic method of balancing chemical equations. Let's get started. Do you recall any of the examples given during the discussion on chemical reactions? They are the following. These are what we call chemical equations. They are symbolic representations of chemical reactions in which the reactants and the products are expressed in terms of respective chemical formula. Chemical equations may use symbols to represent factors such as the direction of the reaction and the physical states of the reacting entities. Chemical equations were first formulated by the French chemist John Began in the year 1615. Chemical reactions can be represented on paper with the help of chemical equations. It is like a recipe for a reaction, so it displays all the ingredients or terms of a chemical reaction. It includes elements, molecules, or ions in the reactants and in the products as well as their state and the proportion of how much of each particle is created relative to one another. This chemical equation demonstrates a typical example of a chemical reaction where we can determine that two molecules of hydrogen will react with one molecule of oxygen to form two molecules of water. Let's take a look at the first example. It can be observed in the example provided above that the reacting entities are written on the left-hand side, whereas the products that are formed from the chemical reaction are written on the right-hand side of the chemical equations because the arrow is pointing towards the right, and the other way around if the arrow is pointing to the left. Also, do you notice the number 2 written before hydrogen and water? 
These are coefficients assigned to each of the symbols of the corresponding reactants and products. These coefficients in a chemical reaction are exactly the value of the stoichiometric number for that entity. What does this mean? Stoichiometry is a section of chemistry that involves using relationship between reactants and or products in a chemical reaction to determine desired quantitative data. In balancing chemical equations, we must also understand the law of conservation of mass which states that the mass in an isolated system can neither be created nor destroyed but can be transformed from one form to another. Therefore, whenever writing chemical equations, we check to see if the number of molecules present in the reactant side of the equation balances the number of molecules present in the product side. With this equation, we can determine that four atoms of hydrogen will react with two atoms of oxygen to form two molecules of water. If we know how many molecules of hydrogen we start out with, we can use the ratio of four atoms of hydrogen to two atoms of oxygen to determine how many molecules of water were produced which contains four atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. This is known as the coefficient factor. The balance equation makes it possible to convert information about one reactant or product to quantitative data about another element. This asks for us to learn the skill of balancing equations to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. Let's take for example the chemical equation sulfur plus oxygen yields sulfur dioxide. Are you curious how to balance this chemical equation? It can be done by following three easy steps. Before we begin, grab a few sheets of paper and a pen and pencil and make sure to follow along the steps as we go through them. Are you ready? Please watch this video. Balancing Chemical Equations Through Trial and Error Method Balancing chemical equations is both challenging and fun. It is quite important to balance chemical equations so whenever we see chemical reactions, we are able to tell the number of molecules reacting and producing. Balance equations also tell us the energy changes that take place. There are a few things to keep in mind whenever balancing chemical equations. Number 1. Whenever we don't see a coefficient or a number in front of the molecule, then it means there is 1. Same is true when there is no number after an element or a subscript. It means there is only one. In balancing chemical equations, we are only going to change the coefficient, not the subscript. Why? Because a change in the subscript changes the entire chemical formula. Let's take, for example, the chemical formula H2O, the chemical formula for water. If we add a 2 after the element oxygen, it becomes H2O2, the chemical formula for hydrogen peroxide. List down all the participating elements, sulfur and oxygen. Step 2. Count the atoms on each side of the chemical equation. On the reactant side or the left-hand side, we have 8 sulfur atoms and 2 oxygen atoms. On the products or the right-hand side, we have only 1 sulfur atom and 2 oxygen atoms. Just by looking at this table, we can see that the oxygens are balanced but not the sulfur. Step 3. Change the coefficient to balance the number of atoms of participating elements. To balance the number of atoms or sulfur atoms, let's put an 8 in front of sulfur dioxide. This gives us 1 times 8 
equals eight sulfur atoms. But just like in algebra, we should also multiply eight with the number of oxygen atoms. This gives us two times eight equals 16 oxygen atoms. Now, the sulfurs are balanced, but we messed up the oxygens. Let's write a coefficient 8 in front of the oxygen in the left-hand side of the equation. This gives us 2 times 8 equals 16 oxygen atoms. Now, all the participating elements are balanced, and our balanced chemical equation is sulfur plus 8 oxygen molecules yields 8 molecules of sulfur dioxide. There you go, it's quite easy, right? Before we do another example, what should you remember in balancing chemical equations? Share your answer with us through the comment section below or write it on a piece of paper. Phenomenal! We can only change the coefficient or the number in front of a symbol and not after it because changing the subscript changes the compound itself. Let us now do a few more examples before we continue our discussion. In the chemical equation, which represents nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas to form ammonia, what is the first step in balancing chemical equations? Share your answer with us in the comment section below. Incredible! The first step is to count the number of atoms of each side of the equation. So we have two nitrogen and two hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side of the equation. Can you list down the number of atoms present on the right-hand side of the equation? You have 10 seconds to answer. Amazing job! In the right-hand side of the equation, we have only one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. Both the number of nitrogen and hydrogen atoms are not balanced. So what should we do next? Exceptional! We change the coefficient. Remember, we only change the coefficient and not the subscript to avoid changing the chemical formula. So let's first put a coefficient of 2 in front of ammonia at the right-hand side of the equation. This gives us two nitrogen atoms on both sides of the equation. But we must also multiply 2 with the three atoms of hydrogen. So we now have six hydrogen atoms on the right side. To balance this, what coefficients should we write in the front of the hydrogen atom on the left-hand side? Please share your answer in the comment section below. Amazing job! We must put a 3. This gives us 3 times 2 hydrogen atom is equal to 6. Now, both the nitrogen and hydrogen are balanced. Didn't you come up with the same answer? You are doing extremely well, Fernandina teens. Now, try balancing this chemical equation on your own. Propane reacts with oxygen, yields carbon dioxide and water. You have 10 seconds to answer. The balanced chemical equation is 2 molecules of propane reacts with 7 molecules of oxygen, yields 3 molecules of carbon dioxide and 8 molecules of water. Did you get the correct answer? Incredible! Keep it up, Fernandino teens! Now, do not forget these steps. First, list down the elements present in the chemical equation. Then, count the number of atoms of an element. And finally, change only the coefficient of the chemical equation. After a short break, we will try to balance more complex reactions by using a simple and practical method. 
we will also learn how to compute for the appropriate coefficient that will balance a chemical equation using the algebraic expressions. So please stay tuned for Nandino Teens TV Season 2. We'll be right back. Maya po oras kaya kayo, Fernandinos. Ako pala ay Elwin Arlserano ng City Tourism Office ng Ciudad San Fernando. Ngayon yung bulan na ini, pag masusyan tayo yung National Heritage Month na ating temang Victory and Humanity Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity. Kambe na nini, metong karang aktibidades na ng siyudad atin ng launching ng Bayong Heritage Passport. Ng Heritage Passport, atin ng metong karang proyekto ng kaya katamong siyudad yung pamanamuna ng Mayor Edwin D. Santiago. Anong nuka rin makalagelangan ding eganagan ng heritage sites, heritage structures, na akit tamo kin kay katamong heritage district. Makakaya daw din kay ni, ding importansya daw ding mapin na tradisyon, kay ni syudad, kalupa na ning pamangawang parol, ang po yung pamangalesa. May aho siyang heritage passport, uling atin kang dapat gawan, Anong nuka rin puntalan mula ding at syukin passport at saka ka mag-selfie kay ba't kanta palto making tourism office at mamiyalang sticker ka rin ega na ganang apuntulan mong lugar at timaw may ngari ang tutong passport. Balumingin ni, panahon na ini, eta mo makain bisa lumal uli na ning COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya naman kimbanwa ngay ni, agkatan ko la ding bikers tamo edad 18 hanggang 50 Imbis na lumawot kayo po, di na nyo lang dita ka oras di kaya katamang heritage structures kaya ni Shuda. Anya naman ka rin mumun ang 50 bikers ang makayari kaya katamang heritage passport, may di na lang premyong Only San Fernando Loot Bag. Inggawan nyo mo bakang ta makapag-register, munta kayo mismo opisina na ng City Tourism, yung munisipyo, at saka kayo magdalang metong valid ID. Kabihan ninyo kayo yung heritage passport, ating makasipit ang instruction nung nano pa yung dapat gawan. Anya naman ka rin hanggang kapadyak yan, na nano ko pa, tara na! Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back to Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. In our discussion earlier, we balanced simple chemical equations using three steps. By listing the elements present in the chemical reaction, counting the number of atoms per element, and changing the coefficient. When balancing chemical equations, you may also come across chemical equations that seem too complicated, such as chemical reactions that went through double displacement reaction. The chemical equation of calcium sulfate reacting with sodium nitrate that yields calcium nitrate and sodium sulfate is an example. This chemical equation has polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are those ions composed of more than one atom by acting as one unit. Here are more examples of polyatomic ions. Can you determine the polyatomic ions present in our example? Share your answer in the comment section below. Amazing job, Fernandino teens! Yes, they are sulfate and nitrate. Go ahead and prepare your pen and paper and balance the chemical equations with polyatomic ions by solving along this video. Balancing chemical equations with polyatomic ions Some chemical equations appear to be so complicated and overwhelming such as this example that contains polyatomic ions. In balancing chemical equations with polyatomic ions, we must treat the polyatomic ion as a single participating element. So, for the first step, list down all elements including the polyatomic ion. So, for this chemical equation, we have iron, nitrate, magnesium, 
and oxygen. Step 2. Count the number of atoms on each side of the chemical equation. On the reactant's side, we have one atom of iron, three nitrate molecules, one magnesium atom, and one oxygen atom. On the product's side, there are two atoms of iron, two nitrates molecules, one magnesium atom, and three oxygen atoms. We can see that only magnesium atoms are balanced. Iron, nitrate, and oxygen needs some work. Let's go to step three. Change the coefficient to balance the number of atoms of every participating element. Let's begin with balancing the iron atoms by writing a coefficient two in front of iron three nitrate. This gives us one times two equals two iron atoms. But as we know, this coefficient two will also double the number of nitrates. This gives us three times two equals six nitrate molecules. To balance out the nitrates, let's write a coefficient 3 in front of magnesium nitrates. This gives us 2 times 3 equals 6 nitrates molecules. And 1 times 3 equals 3 magnesium atoms. By adding a coefficient 3 in front of magnesium oxide, we get 1 times 3 equals 3 magnesium atoms. And 1 times 3 equals 3 oxygen atoms. Finally, all the atoms of each participating element are balanced. Our final balanced chemical equation is 2 molecules of iron 3 nitrate reacts with 3 molecules of magnesium oxide, yields iron 3 oxide, and three molecules of magnesium nitrate. See how easy that is? From now on, if you come across polyatomic ions, simply treat the polyatomic ions as a single unit. Now practice your new learned skill by balancing this chemical equation. Silver nitrate plus copper yields copper nitrate and silver. You have 10 seconds to answer. Are you done? The correct answer is two molecules of silver nitrate reacts with copper, yields copper nitrate and two silver atoms. I knew you can do it. Terrific. Another way of balancing chemical equations is through solving using the algebraic method. This are more rigid and quicker way of finding the correct coefficient without going through the trial and error method. Once again, grab your pens and papers with you and work along this video that will show us how to use algebraic method in balancing chemical equations. Are you ready? Let's get started. Balancing chemical equations using algebraic method. In this last part of our discussion, we will look at the algebraic method of balancing chemical equations. I understand that combining algebra and balancing chemical equations might sound overwhelming, but it is very useful. This algebraic method is useful for both simple and complex chemical equations. You know, those equations that you get to balance one element of the equation, but the other parts get unbalanced. So for those who prefer a more rigid and sure way of balancing those equations, instead of going through the trial and error method, this is definitely the way to go. Let's balance this chemical equations above. Step 1. 
represent the unknown coefficient with letters A for potassium chlorate, B for potassium chloride, and C for oxygen. Letter A now represents the coefficient of potassium chlorate. B represents the coefficient of potassium chloride. And C represents the coefficient of oxygen. Step 2. List down all the participating elements. We have potassium, chlorine, and oxygen. Step 3. Equate the number of atoms of every participating element in the reactant side to the product's side. So for K, we have one potassium in A, so we write A. The arrow sign represents the equal sign. And one potassium in B, so we write B. There are no potassium elements in C. For chlorine, we have one chlorine in A, so we write A equals for the arrow sign, and one chlorine in B, so we write B. There are no chlorine elements in C. For oxygen, we have three oxygen atoms in A, so we write 3A. Write an equal sign to represent the arrow. We have no oxygen in B, so we skip it. Next, we have two oxygen atoms in C, so we write 2C. Step 4. Predict which among A, B, and C might have the lowest value and assume that it is equal to 1. For this example, let us say that A is equal to 1. Looking at our equations, we can also say that A is equal to B, so B is equal to 1. Now we have coefficients A and B's value. Let's move on to find the value of coefficient C. Our equation that contains or includes C is 3A equals 2C. We know that A is equal to 1, so let's substitute that value. Now we get 3 times 1 equals 2C. Or 3 is equal to 2C. Next step is to divide everything into 2 to get the value of C. So now we have 3 over 2 is equal to C. Let us list down our coefficient. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1, and C is equal to 3 over 2. Now, we cannot use a fraction as a coefficient, so we must remove the denominator by multiplying everything with 2. A is equal to 1 times 2 equals 2. B is equal to 1 times 2 equals 2. And C is equal to 3 over 2 times 2 equals 3. Now we have whole numbers for coefficients. It's time for step number 5. Substitute the value of letters to the coefficient. So we have two molecules of potassium chlorate because A is equal to 2. We have two molecules of potassium chloride because B is equal to 2. And we have three molecules of oxygen because C is equal to 3. Our final balance equation is therefore, two molecules of potassium chlorate decomposes to yield two molecules of potassium chloride and three molecules of oxygen. Wow, that was fun! Now, let's review those steps. Step 1. Represent the unknown coefficients with letters. Step 2. List down all participating elements and equate the number of atoms of their value in the reactant side to the product side. 
Step 3. Predict which among the letter coefficient has the lowest value and substitute it with 1. Step 4. Solve for the value of the letter coefficient. Step 5. Substitute the value of the letter coefficient. Step 6. Check if the equation is balanced. Let's do that again. Using this example, ethylene reacts with oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water. Are you ready? Let's get started. We begin by representing the unknown coefficients with letter A, B, C, and D. Now, we list down all the participating elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Next, equate these element values. For C, we have 2 in A, none in B, equals 1 in C, and none in D, which gives us 2A equals C. For H, we have 4 in A, none in B, equals none in C, and 2 in D, which gives us 4A is equal to 2D. Finally, for O, we have none in A, 2 in B equals 2 in C plus 1 in D, which gives us 2B is equal to 2C plus 1D. Great job! Evaluate these values. Predict which coefficient has the lowest value and substitute it with 1. Which do you think has the lowest value? Is it A? B, C, or D? Amazing answer! It's A! Let's assume now that A is equal to 1 and solve for the value of C. Fernandino teens, what is the value of C? Excellent job! C is equal to 2. Now, solve for the value of D. What is the value of D? Excellent. D is equal to 2. Finally, please solve for the value of B. Share with us your answers. What is the value of B? Incredible. B is equal to 3. At last, we will now substitute the values to the equation and get... Now, it is your task to check for balance count if we have equal number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. Terrific! Balancing chemical equations is both challenging and fun. I hope you're having an enjoyable time. As a reward, let's have a short break and when we come back, we will share with you a path simulation that helps us visualize and understand balancing chemical equations even more. So don't go away. We will be right back here in Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. Hindi lamang sa larangan ng pangkabuhayan apektado ang maraming pamilyang Pilipino, kundi maging sa larangan ng pagkatuto ng bawat batang Pilipino. Inilunsad ng Siyudad ng San Fernando ang programa Nurturing Environment and System for Thriving or NEST, isang education community pantry na naglalayon para sa isang malawakang pagtulong, pagtabay at paggabay na ang focus ay ang makapagbigay ng tulong at suporta sa ating mga mag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng educational needs gaya na lamang ng school supplies, tutorial sessions, study tips, at iba pang mga pamamaraan na mas lalong makatutulong sa pag-angat ng ating edukasyon. Dahil hindi hadlang ang pandemya sa magandang kinabukasang naghihintay sa ating mga mag-aaral. Sino-sino nga ba ang mga kalahok sa programang ito? Sa pagtutulungan ng ating school administrators, guro, magulang, at iba pang mga miyembro ng ating komunidad 
gaya ng barangay officials at sangguniang kabataan, ay siguradong magiging mas matagumpay ang programang ito. Ano nga ba ang magiging proseso ng naturang programa? Una, magkakaroon tayo ng isang Facebook group, ang Pampanga High School Nest Education Community Pantry na pangungunahan ng Educational Pantry Coordinator. Ang mga magulang, tagapangalaga at mga guro ay iaad ng ating Educational Pantry members sa Facebook group na ito. Sa page na ito, maaaring ipost ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga o sino mang miyembro ng Educational Pantry ang kanilang mga kahilingan o requests. Kailangan ding ilagay ang pangalan ng mag-aaral, grade, at section para sa mas agarang aksyon. Oo nga pala, hindi lang requests ang pwedeng ipost. Pwede ring mag-post ang mga nais magbigay ng tulong o mga gustong mag-donate. Sabi nga nila, sharing is caring. Pandaan na ang Facebook group na ito ay pribado at posts na may kaugnayan lamang sa page na ito ang maaaprobahan. Mayroon din palang Google Form na ipamamahagi kung saan maaari nating isumite ang ating requests o kahilingan. Paano naman ang mga walang internet access sa bahay? Huwag mangamba dahil merong mga nakalaang drop boxes ang ating paaralan na kung saan maaaring ihulog ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang kanilang requests. Sa mga nais namang mag-donate ng school supplies, maaaring ilagay ang mga ito sa tabi ng drop boxes. Maaari ring mag-donate ng mga kagamitan o cash donation kaakibat ang pagsusumite ng deed of donation form. Pangalawa, mahalaga ang ugnayan ng mga guro at ng mga magulang o tagapangalaga sa programang ito. Gamit ang video calls o chats ay ipahahayag ng mga guro ang adhikain ng programang ito sa mga magulang o tagapangalaga. Maaari ring gawin ang orientation na ito ng face-to-face -face, kasabay ng schedule ng kuhanan ng mga module. Gaya ng nabanggit, hindi lamang mga bagay ang maaaring i-donate. Pwede ring mag-conduct ng tutorial session, study tips, at iba pang mga kagamitan sa pagkatuto gayat ng mga aklat o kaya ay gadgets. Ikatlo, ang requested needs ng ating mga magulang o tagapangalaga ay ililista ng ating nest focal person. Ang mga coordinator naman ang mag-aayos ng mga ito. Ang advisors ng ating mga mag-aaral, guidance counselor, at iba pang mga guro ay ipaaalam sa ating mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang petsa at oras ng pamimigay ng requested needs na gaganapin sa paaralan. Sabi nga nila, it takes a village to raise a child. Kaya naman aktibo at iba yung pakikilahok ang inaasahan sa pagsasanib puwersa ng paaralan at barangay na siyang tutukoy sa pangangailangan ng bawat Fernandinong mag-aaral at kikilos upang matugunan ito sa tulong at suporta rin ng mga miyembro ng komunidad. Isang malawakang komunidad para sa isang produktibong educational community pantry ay tiyak na lilikha ng iba yung pagkilos upang maging mas magaan at madali ang pagkatuto ng bawat kabataang Fernandino. Kaya naman tandaan, magbigay ayon sa kakayahan, Kumuha ayon sa pangangailangan. Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back to Fernandino Teens TV. A while back, we discussed ways on how to balance chemical equations using steps presented in the videos. This time, let us play a game utilizing FET Simulator in order to visualize on how equations are being balanced using coefficients. This simulator will also show changes that happens to atoms and molecules depending on the number of coefficients placed in the equation. 
The game would have three stages, level 1, level 2, and level 3. In every level, the degree of complexity of equations being balanced is greater than the previous one. Depending on the level, you will be given 10 to 20 seconds to determine the coefficients that would make the equation balanced. Here is the first level. Here is the first level. What coefficients would you place in the equation that would make it balanced? You will be given 10 seconds. If you decided to put these coefficients, then you are correct. The equation is balanced. In the same manner, you can observe that the number of hydrogen atoms in the reactant side is the same with the product side. The same is true on the number of oxygen atoms. Let us now proceed on the second level. Identify the coefficients that would make this chemical equation balanced. This time, you will be given 15 seconds. Your 15 seconds starts now. Time is up, Fernandina teams. If you decided to put these coefficients, then you are correct. The chemical equation is balanced. Counting the number of atoms on the reactant side, there would be one carbon and oxygen atoms and six hydrogen atoms. Likewise, the product side also has the same number of atoms for each element. You're doing great, Fernandino teams! For the final level, try to balance this chemical equation by putting the correct coefficients. This time, you will be given 20 seconds. Do your best, Fernandino teams! If you answered the same with this one, then you are correct. Amazing, Fernandina teams. The chemical equation is balanced. As you can see, the reactant side and the product side of the equation have the same number of atoms. There are four carbon atoms, four hydrogen atoms, and ten oxygen atoms on both sides of the chemical equation. Thank you for participating in this simple game using the FET simulator. For those who got all the equations balanced, you deserve a round of applause. For the rest, keep on practicing until you master the concept of balancing chemical equations. You may access the FET simulator we used in this discussion in this website or via Google Play. Here are the references used in this presentation. Until next time, Fernandina teens, once again, I am Ma'am Gemmeline Lumage, and remember to take advantage of the education available to you because not everyone enjoys the same opportunity. God bless and thank you. Tu sa